This is a Condor brand air compressor pressure switch, which refers to the brand name and I think the style of the switch since they're so popular. Its electrical rating is for 120 volts or 240 volts and has a pressure range of 105 to 135 PSI. This inlet material is either aluminum or die cast zinc, I'm not sure, but either way, you won't have galvanic corrosion with this material and with the common pipe fittings that are made of steel, cast iron, stainless, brass, copper, or galvanized, according to this chart I found on the internet. These four ports are all connected, so the pressure will be the same for all four things that are connected to this chamber. My compressor will have a pressure gauge and the safety valve attached, and the whole device will be connected to the tank, so everything will be at tank pressure. Each of these four ports are one quarter inch NPT, measures a half inch across, and the general rule is to measure the connection and subtract a quarter inch to get the nominal size fitting. So a half inch minus a quarter inch is a quarter inch. This is the pressure unloader valve. It goes by other names too. It's not connected by pressure to this chamber. It is connected by this quarter inch OD polyethylene tube to the top of the check valve. It's a push to connect fitting. You push it in and it won't come out. In order to get it out, you need to pull back on this collar while pulling out at the same time. The pressure switch mechanically opens this unloader valve when the pressure switch turns off power to the motor. Its purpose is to relieve or unload pressure in the cylinder head of the compressor to make it easier for the compressor to start up again. To remove the unloader valve, you rotate it counterclockwise until the little tab comes out of the slot. This one's loose because this is a broken switch. This one's quite a bit tighter. You'd have to use a wrench. And here is the little needle valve. It doesn't take very much pressure at all to uh, push that in and out. The two ears with the holes on the frame are for attaching electrical conduit fittings. One side is for the outlet or line power. The other side is for the motor wiring. It's got two ground screws for grounding the wire from the line and for the motor. I've also seen rubber grommets that go on these holes that wires can pass through. I assume that's for when you're not using conduit and just using flexible wiring. Molded in the plastic are the labels for the line and the motor terminals. Your power supply wires will be connected to these two and your motor will be connected to these two. It actually doesn't matter which side you connect the hot and neutral wires to. It can be flipped either way, same with the motor. Just as long as you have the motor wires down here and your line power wires up here. This white post is connected to the off and auto switch. Auto is on, but it's automatically controlled off and on by the pressure switch. And to align these two, when I put it together, I just put this counterclockwise all the way, and then this one's counterclockwise all the way, and that helps it align the two together. There you go. By turning this screw clockwise, it shifts the whole fixed range of pressures that the compressor operates at. This other screw changes the upper cutout pressure, which effectively changes the range of pressures that it operates at. The lower one doesn't change, but the upper one does. Finally, this little opening is just the screw hole for mounting the cover on.